Great presentation, guys. Way to start us off. Great pitch. And I was excited also to learn about Steve Andrews, who runs uh, one of the largest solar light distribution companies in the world, called me before the show and uh, said he'd committed to a couple of units from you. So, uh, Taylor, uh, go ahead and, and get us started. Hey, guys, that was great. And actually, I think I'm more nervous than you are. I mean, super <laughs> cool up there. Um, tell me a little bit about your unit economics and how this is defensible. I mean, lots of people have tried hand crank solutions, and, and you're a, a new iteration. I mean, tell me about how you scale this and make money. Right. So if we can pull up the mitigating risk slide. Slide 27, please. All right, so our biggest risk is competitors entering our market with a similar product, but a huge, large capital. But we hope you won't have that problem after tonight. Just in case, we have three ways to mitigate that. The first one is we're gonna be, we already filed for a provisional patent for our design. Uh, the second way is uh, we're, our distributors are gonna be signing ex exclusive agreements for our product category. And finally, uh, we're looking to establish a trustworthy brand and customer loyalty so that they will always come back uh, and buy our products. Uh, sorry, gross margins on every unit sold? Uh, 55%. G2? Just to follow up on the gross margins, 55% at scale, and at what unit scale will you get to 55%? So 55% is assuming our current market demand and repeat purchases from our distributors. Hans. So where, where would you produce this? Would you produce them locally or how have you thought that through? So um, the prototypes we actually developed ourselves in a makerspace in UAE, but for the final product, we're gonna be manufacturing them in Hong Kong with our manufacturing partner, IYC Capital. Please, Dr. Kendi. Yes, we, we understand that, and we're trying to make sure that our customers that also can't afford that low price point still get the product. And for that reason, we're working with companies that have CSR platforms, so we can actually give the product away in the form of giveaways. So essentially, we provide the product to the, the companies that have CSR platforms, and then we give them away to the people that can't afford them, but need them the most. Venus? I have a question about the product. What's the fully charged capacity of the battery, and how long does that battery live? Can we put a slide 26, please? So uh, with our current prototype, it takes 45 minutes to fully charge the battery inside. And with that fully charged capacity, you would be able to power our 0.6 watt light for 16.3 hours or charge an average phone in Nigeria by 220%, so just over two times. But to make it more uh, feasible for some of our customers, we've also added an input that allows them to connect a solar panel which would then allow them to charge the product in the morning without having to crank it as much, or also it can be charged from a normal outlet for people who only have outages and need this product when they have an outage. Ambassador. Thank you. Uh, my question really follows Candy because he asked my question. Uh, I, I want to know what kind of analysis you did, not of the size of the market, but really of the market that can afford the product. And in the event that there is a challenge in relation to financing, which there is because you're talking about people who earn a dollar a day or less, are there mechanisms, are you partnering with, partnering with any organization that will help to provide funding to the market? Because I get the sense that you need your capital in your hand immediately. So essentially, that was initially our main plan. We wanted to finance the product over eight months, so the people would pay us $2.5 every single month. However, given that it is very challenging and very hard for us to start our operations and collect the cash at the same time, we're planning on putting this out in bulk, getting it to these people that can't afford it through the CSR platforms. But in the future, definitely, financing uh, is definitely an option for us that we're considering. Hans. How about the resilience of the product? I mean, this product will be in rough areas where there's no electricity, dust, rain, winds, and all of that. So how is the resilience of the product? Uh, can we pull up the slide with our crank-powered battery? OK, so our product will actually have um, water, water resistance, and it will also be dust-proof. Um, so it will allow it to, to survive in, this conditions, in these conditions for up to three years. And this three years is actually the limit because of our battery, which would probably not last more than three years. But then even if they want to keep using our device, they could replace the battery and still use them. 
Ibrahim, very quickly, 17 seconds left. Um, can you uh, tell us the cultural issues to the adoption of the product? and how much testing has been done on it, please. So we launched a pilot program that lasted for uh, almost three weeks and we're continuing to do so. We have members from Nigeria and board advisors from Nigeria as well. So we work on that. Thank you very much, guys. Give it up for you, Light.